There are characters from the Abrahamic religions, which include Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, that includes the seven archangels. Since they keep an eye on humanity, they are also known as the Watchers. According to Pseudo-Dionysius de Coelesti Hierarchia, which was written in the 4th or 5th century CE, there was a nine-level hierarchy of the heavenly host. Angels, archangels, principalities, powers, virtues, dominions, thrones, cherubim, and seraphim were all part of this hierarchy. Only the angels, the lowest of these, were above the archangels. You may be familiar with the tale of Lucifer and a few of the archangels, who were either expelled from heaven or chose to leave on their own. There are other archangels, though, including the seven archangels I'll be discussing in this video, who stood their ground. There are seven archangels in the prehistoric era of the Judeo-Christian Bible. They are known as the Watchers because they watch over people. Michael and Gabriel are the only two people named in the canonical Bible. The other books were dropped and the books of the Bible were arranged at the Council of Nicene in the 4th century. The most well-known archangel legend goes by the name of the myth of the fallen angels. The archangels passed. As you may know, the Catholic and Protestant translations of the canonical Bible, as well as the Quran, only mention Michael and Gabriel as archangels. But the apocryphal book of Enoch, a text found in Qumran, first spoke of seven. The names of the remaining five vary, but the most popular ones are Raphael, Uriel, Regel, Zerachiel, and Ramiel. The archangels are a part of the legend of the fallen angels, an old story that is far older than the New Testament of Christ, even though it is thought that the Book of Enoch was first composed around 300 BCE. The legends are related to the building of King Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem during the Bronze Age's first temple period, which started in the 10th century BCE. Hurrian, Hellenistic Egyptian, and ancient Greek literature all contain stories like this. The names of the angels were given by Mesopotamia's Babylonian civilization. The Fall of Angels and the Origin of Evil Contrary to the Jewish account of Adam, the myth of the fallen angels holds that it was angels, not people from the Garden of Eden, who were ultimately to blame for the existence of evil on earth. Along with their fallen angel parents, the Nephilim, who were the fallen angels' offspring, were accountable. Two hundred angels, including Semihaza, Asael, and others, visited the planet, got married to women, and had terrible giants as their offspring. Worst of all, they made the secrets of heaven known to Enoch's family, particularly those involving precious metals and metallurgy. The bloodshed that followed, according to the fallen angel legend, caused an uproar from the earth that could be heard at the gates of heaven and was relayed to God by the archangels. The heavenly hosts prevented Enoch from pleading from heaven in a blazing chariot. Enoch eventually acquired the title of the Metatron, an angel, as a result of his deeds. God then instructed the archangels to intervene, warn Noah, imprison the sinful angels, wipe out their offspring, and purify the earth to remove what the angels had polluted. Anthropologists point out that the myth of the fallen angels may have reflected societal worries about competing food technology, just as the stories of Cain, the farmer, and Abel, the shepherd, did. Giving up on the mythologies. By the time of the Second Temple, this myth had evolved, and some theologians, like David Souter, believe that it served as the basis for the Jewish Temple's endogamy laws, which governed who a high priest was allowed to marry. To avoid the risk of profaning their lineage or their seed, religious leaders are cautioned in this parable to only marry within the bounds of the priesthood and with particular families among the lay community. There is now only the Book of Revelation. However, the Catholic Church and the Protestant translation of the Bible still include a portion of the story, the conflict between the one fallen angel Lucifer and the archangel Michael. Instead of taking place on earth, the conflict in the book of Revelation takes place in heaven. Among the angels Lucifer fights, only Michael is mentioned. 
The remainder of the story was omitted from the canonical Bible in 382 CE by Pope Damasus I, who was in power from 366 to 384 CE, and the Council of Rome. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated and had no place in heaven. At this point, war broke out in heaven, pitting Michael and his angels against the dragon. The enormous dragon, that age-old serpent known as the devil and Satan, the world's greatest deceiver, was also brought to the ground, along with his angelic minions. Let me now explain what set each of these seven archangels apart from the others. Michael. Michael is the first and most important of the archangels. Who is like God, a name that alludes to the conflict between archangels and fallen angels. Michael stood in complete contrast to Lucifer, also known as Satan, who sought to resemble God. Michael is referred to in the Bible as Israel's protector and the general of the angels. He also appears in Daniel's visions while he is in the lion's den and leads God's army in the conflict with Satan in the book of Revelation while wielding a massive sword. He is recognized as the patron saint of the Holy Eucharist. Michael is paired with Sunday and the Sun in some occult religious communities. Gabriel Gabriel's meanings range widely, including the might of God, God's hero, and God has manifested himself mighty. He is the holy messenger and the angel of wisdom, revelation, prophecy, and visions. According to the Bible, Gabriel is credited with appearing to the Virgin Mary and the priest Zacharias to tell them, respectively, that they would soon give birth to Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. As the patron saint of baptism, Gabriel is also connected to the moon and Monday in occult circles. Raphael Raphael, whose name means, God heals, or, God's healer, is not even mentioned in the canonical Bible. He is referred to as the Archangel of Healing, and he may have been briefly mentioned in John 5 verses 2-4. A large number of people who were ill, blind, lame, and withered were waiting for the water to move in, the pond of Bethida. And at specific times, a Lord's angel entered the pond, moving the water. And the person who entered the pond first, following the flow of the water, was healed of any ailments he was suffering from. In the apocryphal book Tobit, Raphael is mentioned. Mercury, Tuesday, and the Sacrament of Reconciliation are all connected to him. The Additional Archangels These four archangels are not included in the majority of contemporary translations of the Bible due to the 4th century CE declaration that the Book of Enoch was non-canonical. The Council of Rome removed these archangels from its list of deities to be revered as a result in 382 CE. Uriel, also known as the Fire of God, is the fourth archangel. The archangel of repentance and the damned is named Uriel. He was the unique watcher tasked with watching over Hades, the patron deity of the sacrament of confirmation. In occult literature, he is frequently associated with Venus and Wednesday. Ragel, also known as Sealtiel, is the fifth archangel. His name means, friend of God and he is also the patron archangel of the sacrament of holy orders as well as justice and fairness. In occult lore, he is connected to Friday and Mars. Zerakiel, one of the six archangels, is also known as Sarakiel, Barashel, Selafiel, Sariel, or Zerakiel. He also goes by the name of God's order. He is the guardian of the sacrament of marriage and an archangel of divine judgment. In occult literature, he is associated with Saturday and Jupiter. The seventh and final archangel is Ramiel, also known as Jeremiel, Jehudiel, or Jeremiel. His name means, Thunder of God, Mercy of God, or, Compassion of God. In addition to being the patron saint of the sacrament of anointing of the sick, he is also known as the Archangel of Dreams, the Archangel of Hope, and the Archangel of Faith. He is also related to Saturn and Thursday in esoteric circles. The only remaining archangels that are known to exist are these ones. 
Thank you for watching.